Sorry if I didn't uh, get you last week. I was I was at Comic Con 2012 in New York, and let me tell you, it was really a fun time. I thought it was something. It was really a positive experience. It was great experience. I you know, met people. I I got a lot of interesting photographs and all that type of stuff. Really great stuff. And hopefully, and I will go again and everything else. And um, <clears throat> next up, uh, the next thing up for me is. Magfest, and I'm gonna probably get the money in right now so I can go and do all the, you know, get ready for that thing and for and, and everything else. So that's my next little big little thing there. Uh, anyway, well, up? There's a lot more interesting stuff to get into wrestling this, but uh, what have you? A lot of interesting things happened. But I'll get on that. But first, I need to talk about a little bit of movie news, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, what have you, well, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we have uh, Warner Brothers has basically said there is going to be a Justice League movie. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, a Justice League movie. But it's not really news now because we all know because since the high event of the Avengers or what have you, of um, you know there was going to probably get at least a Justice the Warner Brothers was going to push out a Justice League movie. But honestly. <laughs> I think this is going to be a really bad idea for Warner Brothers and for pushing a Justice League movie so quickly because it is movie is going to be planned in summer 2015. Guess what else is coming out in summer 2015? That's right, the Avengers. The Avengers are going to be <laughs> uh, Avengers Two is going to come out around uh, summer 2015, and it's. I don't know if it's going to be the same month or what have you, but honestly, I think it's going to be a really bad idea. I think it's going to be a really bad idea. I think it's going to be something of a huge mess because they don't have any other, I mean, besides Batman, we all know how that ground floor and everything else, but here's the crazy thing. Batman's set in that real world, and and Superman is more of fantastic stuff, and well, how are you going to fit, like, other people in there, like Green Lantern, which that movie didn't do so well, and The Flash, Martian Manhunter, which, honestly, you could do have him be, like, S.H.I.E.L.D. or what have you, but um, what about, uh, let me say, Wonder Woman uh, or any other people from the Justice League? Are they going to have, like, like the animated series one? Would you have Hawk Girl or what have you? Uh, how about... Uh, the new 52, are they going to have that? Are they going to have Aquaman? Are they going to have um, uh, which version of the Flash is going to be? Is it going to be Barry Allen? Is it going to be Wally West? Um, are they going to have Cyborg in it? What type of justice, what are they going to do? It's just, I mean, the only characters that one of us actually do care about are Batman and Superman, mostly Batman. The question is, how in the world are they going to actually fit in all these other like, characters? Because the way Marvel's did it, it's it's amazing. Marvel actually got moved like for Iron Man. They got some for Iron Man, Captain America, Thor, uh, and everything else. Everything just fit in perfectly. And now they're going to have Avengers 2. They're only going to have other follow-ups. I mean, 2013, they're going to have, I think... Um, I think the next Storm movie is going to come out there and Guns of the Galaxy, um, I think 2014 as well. Uh, I mean, there's other stuff that Marvel coming down uh, the, the pike. And I'm just thinking that, you know what, I just don't... Um, and everything, I just don't know how, what type of uh, things that Marvel's going to do to build up that movie. I mean, 
to me, the thing is already passed. I mean, D.C. just really been late on the boat here because it just feels like, um, I mean, Warner Brothers really have missed the boat on this. And it's a shame because just, I, 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 even though I love the Avengers, I still basically think the Justice League is something you can really do a good movie about. You can do some great stories to tell, not only with guys like Dark Side or the, um, or the, a Gorilla Grodd or what have you, all the other villains that the Justice League face, or like the Anti-Monitor, all that type of stuff. I mean, the villains like that, well, I would love to see again in the silver screen, but I just don't see Warner Brothers actually going to really do that. It just picks me off that we, I mean, you get someone like Marvel who honestly is, I mean, let's be honest, Marvel who, well, I got to say some of their ideas in comic books, a bit wonky or what have you, but in the end of the day, they really know what their characters are and in a movie time format. DC, they don't know what they're doing. I mean, I just feel like, honestly, when you look at the the Glass Green Lantern movie, just, I mean, even if just basic movie uh, tropes or what have you, it just feels like they just couldn't get that stuff right. Marvel, for all their faults in the comic world, on TV, what have you, you know, what have you, and everything else, um, they know how to get their characters in the movies and such. They know the basics of their character. DC, they just don't know how to do it, except Batman, which that's it. It's sad, really. And I, and I feel with this whole thing, I just don't think it's going to be really interesting as well. <clears throat> anyway, uh, that's a bit of that. Now I'm going to be talking about uh, the uh, the pro wrestling stuff as well for the main meat of the show and what you guys listen to. Um, anyway, after this little sound break, we'll be right back here on the Duke CT Lounge. Thank you so much for listening. I'll be right back here on the Duke CT Lounge. <laughs> The phone number, if you want to join me, Duke CT Live here is 
724-444-7444. Once again, the number is 724-444-7444. And the call ID to connect to me, Duke CT, is 92417. Once again, the call ID is 92417. But if you want to connect to me on the shoe phone, you can do that. As you can just use the TalkShoe 2.0 app, you can connect your shoe phone to me. If you have a microphone, you can just sit and talk as long as you want to talk and what have you. And uh, that's all you have to do. Just download the TalkShoe Live Pro 2.0, and bam, you can just call in and uh, talk wrestling and all what have you. Anyway, and chat is on lo- on uh, locked as well, so you can go and chat all your opinions as well. Anyway, let's talk about, well, uh, let's see, um, <clears throat> WWE. Let's get down to WWE first. Well, WWE has a very interesting quandary, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Since, well, they're all going out doing the whole Ryback versus Punk, the question is, well, what can they do? Um, because, honestly, Ryback is not going to win the championship. Um... <laughs> It just seems to me that they actually put themselves in the corner, and I'm looking at um, you know some people on the insiders and such saying the creative is in a quandary. Part of me doesn't want to believe that since you know the you know the inside sources could be anything else. But let's all be real here; they have booked themselves in a bit of a corner. It's not like that happened before, and they still haven't got on these corners and everything else. But honestly, the question does remain, how do you get this whole Punk and Ryback finish? Well, personally, honestly, the most easiest thing is have Brock Lesnar come in, screw uh, Ryback, and damn, and bam, there you go. Um, but people will say, hey, what about Triple H's revenge? Honestly, I don't care about Triple H. Uh, and coming back, I mean, Triple H should have, shouldn't, shouldn't that last match, the end of an era match, at WrestleMania, should have just said, hey, um, should that mean the end of an era? That's the last time Triple H is supposed to compete? You know, that thing, it just it just bothers me when they just say, it truly is the end of an era, but yet Triple H wrestles like what? A um, couple months, like five, six months later, you know, that sort of thing. It, it just seems to me that WWE doesn't really know how to build any type of new stars. And personally, I don't care uh, about... Brock Lesnar coming back again because he's been misused immensely. He should have been the one to destroy John Cena. He should be the guy to destroy John Cena. Cena can't go back. Like, he gets beaten down bloody enough. Cena doesn't want to go back to the ring wrestling for a while. He faces up CM Punk. He wins the WWE Championship. All seems well. Cena comes back 100% what have you. He comes in, beats, um, uh, beats Brock Lesnar and at a uh, Survivor Series, and um, goes on to have Brock Lesnar and um, go on, he has nephews, what have you, have The Rock, then go on face The Rock again, and hopefully their match will be good, but I doubt it. <clears throat> have The Rock, I would say The Rock wins here, because John Cena losing, at this point, John Cena already beat Brock Lesnar, so I, I mean, if he loses to The Rock, I don't really care. In fact, have him, have him beat The Rock at uh, next year's SummerSlam, though, what have you. Uh, that would be really more interesting. Uh, if you want to have Cena, really want to have to beat him. But have The Rock win at um, win at Royal Rumble. Have uh, CM Punk win, uh, win, uh, win the Royal Rumble. You have Rock versus CM Punk at WrestleMania. CM Punk regains the WWE Championship and has a nice little reign until someone else, say Dolph Ziggler, Kofi Kingston, or the like, or the Miz, defines him or something. That's how I would have done it. And it looks like it would be a lot more interesting. If you want me to, you know, if that more interesting, say, if you're not posting or what have you, YouTube, Stuart Attack, or what have you, just say something, you know, like say, you know what, that, that seems interesting. Um... But instead of this, having CM Punk just cry, bitch, and moan, say, I don't have respect, that whole malarkey or what have you, same thing with TNA and such, which is sad, <sighs> what they're doing to TNA. It just seems like if you can't get your fa- uh, guy who is already over as a face, just uh, turn him heel for no reason. <sighs> 
You know, that sort of thing. It just seems that, honestly, I think it's a lot better to, uh, you know, I think it would have been a lot better if you did that, build up better sauce. But now it just seems like they're just crying, whining, supplying CM Punk. You have another thing that, uh, uh, you know, Cena, who is, well, let's be honest, doesn't need a championship. Uh, what have you. I don't know why he was in the main event. But And then you have Ryback, who, honestly, I like Ryback. I think he needs, like, uh, maybe, personally, have, I honestly think he shouldn't get his first, personally, um, I wouldn't mind him getting his uh, title shot maybe next year. Someone like Ryback should actually be favoring for them. I mean, they, they, he was looking at the Miz or something for the Intercontinental Championship. Why not? I don't know why uh, someone like Kofi Kingston should be having the Intercontinental title and then have, you know, have uh, Ryback win the Intercontinental Championship, build himself up, and then somehow people will actually start liking him. Then have him, like, face the championships probably around, say, um, next year, SummerSlam, or, you know, maybe, you know, earliest SummerSlam, latest Survivor Series, his first championship, his first WWE champion, you know, world title shot. Personally, I think he should go for the world title to get the whole Goldberg thing full circle, but still. <laughs> but that's just my personal opinion. But um, this... Uh, but this whole thing, I don't think it's going to work out. I think Punk, Cena, I mean, Punk is going to win the match regardless. I have Punk winning. I have, I don't see him losing the belt because honestly, him losing the championship would just, just seem like really anticlimactic. It just seems like if you do have him win the match, Ryback at best will be a one-turn champion. And a someone like Ryback who loses the championship in a month via Sanagans would basically just, would really ruin the character, unless he gets the championship back as soon. Um, but honestly, it just seems to me that I would not be surprised if WWE does that. But honestly, it just seems to me that WWE just are in a completely, in a probably in a very interesting corner, because if they do something, Lord knows they're going to have to do like this, that, you're going to have to do everything else. Have to, um, you're in the corner right now, uh, to maybe put, get a new star, but honestly, Ryback, he needs a little more seasoning. I mean, but then again, they this is the same company that pushed Sheamus right out the gate, and well, he is he, he he's still fizzling. That that's the thing. Sheamus may get cheers, but let's be honest, he's not what he could have been. That's my thing. He's not what he could have been. Um, as someone as a true superstar. He could have been something great, but instead he's just, well, average at best, you know. That's the problem, you know. Just They take things, they just push things way too fast with WWE. And like guys who are over, say like The Miz and Kobe Kingston, fight over for an kind of championship belt, which honestly is completely pointless. It is. It's just completely pointless. Anyway, that's um, my... Uh, WWE little uh, talk about the WWE. Um, next up, I'm going to be talking about TNA and Bound for Glory and all the stuff I've seen from Bound for Glory um, and what have you. My reaction. I haven't seen the pay-per-view yet, but I will talk about the ramifications of what happened at that said pay-per-view. Uh, some of the things, not all of them. Anyway, we'll be right back here on the Duke C... Lounge.
The phone number once again is 724-444-7444. Once again, the number is 724-444-7444. And the call ID to connect to me, Duke CT, is 92417. Once again, the number is the call ID is 92417. And now it is time to talk about TNA. Most importantly, the Aces and Eats storyline. As they did, Aces and Ace took down Bully Ray and Sting at Bound for Glory. Winner at Bully Ray and Sting win, Aces and Ace are gone. But if Sting and Bully Ray lose and Aces and Ace win, guess what? The Aces and Ace has full control. They can go into TNA, Impact Zone, wherever they want, or what have you. They get full access. And I can't tell what the, the match would have you, but the outcome of the match is. Ace and Ace win the Ace and or what have you. And then guess what? Who was one of the mass people who did it? Who was one of the people who were a part who was a part of Ace and Ace? Devon. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Devon and Devon was the one who betrayed. Who betrayed? TNA. You know, and what have you. And the funny thing is, Devon was going to say why he betrayed him, but yet Sting came out and just, well, ruined that segment with another pointless brawl, which is nice. <laughs> but anyway, it just seems to me that, honestly, the Aces and Ace thing is just, the world is just spinning its wheels. You don't know what's what. They get full access again, fine. And they have their own interest tunnel like the NWO did in its early days. I mean, they are still the cool mystique is there. I like, but it's just really thin with these guys. It is really thin with aces and eights, and I feel that if they keep, I honestly think they're trying to hold this thing off like too long. I feel like they, I'm not saying the whole thing like a bound for glory, like all oh, what have you, but to me, I feel like this thing should have been somewhat of a turning point, something of a huge thing. Devon Reveal was good. I feel, honestly, I honestly feel that the leader should have been involved. Instead of just having him being basically the second in command. Or the sergeant at arms. As Mike, no, no, no. Mike Tanae said it. He's the sergeant of arms. Devon. Oh, Lord. Can someone get Mike Tanae some uh, caffeine, some coffee? She's always so some enthusiasm. Uh, and and Taz, just Taz. I, you know, honestly, I I wouldn't mind Mike Tanay if he was paired up with Jeremy Borash because Jeremy Borash actually is pretty good on them. I mean, seriously, he's really good. And I feel like honestly, he's just. I mean, Taz, why can't just be his? Um, why can't Taz just be Samoa Joe's manager again? Sang be his manager. They have they have Christy Hemme being you know the um, the ring announcer, which I will have no problem with. I have no problem with that. But have Mike Tanay and and uh, Jamie Borash as the main lead, I would not have a problem with that. I think it would have been more, that's a lot more, exactly, a little more hyped up and a little more professional. <clears throat> also, before I head out, Oh, this has been very interesting, ladies and gentlemen. Jeff Hardy, the drugged out idiot hippie, as he is, and I, I haven't seen the match. Some people say it was great, and I haven't seen everything else, but he won the TNA Championship, and 
And, and I don't want to be a person who just says that Jeff Hardy should never win. I mean, I said that. I said Jeff Hardy should never win championship. And I don't know what's going on, David. I don't know what TNA sees in him. I don't know where he goes day to day, and I hope to God that he is clean on the clean now. Because I just get a feeling that, like, the next couple of weeks or something, he's going to be he's going to have a DWI, and he's going to be looked really bad for the company. And honestly, I, I would not be surprised by that. Because, I mean, Jeff Hardy has proven that he is, when he gets the ball or what have you, he fails. Jeff Hardy doesn't know how to really handle success. He just doesn't know how to do it. I don't think he just. I don't think he has the mental wherewithal to deal with that type of pressure. He, and when he was there in the WWE, and especially in TNA, with his recent failings and such of last year, and I'm sorry, it just seems to me a guy like Jeff Hardy should not be anywhere near the main event um, picture. Should not be challenged for any championship. That is my personal opinion. And also his design scheme for a championship is some of the worst things out there. I mean, my God, what is wrong with you? What the... <clears throat> to paraphrase Nash from other great shows, what have you, from That Guy with the Glasses, That Guy with the Glasses, um, <clears throat> Jeff Hardy, what the fuck is wrong with you? Look, if you actually look at these championship belts... Do you actually really look at these 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 covers, these nice championship? I think like, wow, these are great art. No, no, these are they're shit. All of them, every single last one of them, they're complete and other horrible, horrible works of art. And I'll say, and I use work of art in the lightest sense of the word. Do you honestly think <coughs> any person who's any type of creativity or what have you, anyone who has someone with, I mean, anyone with a brain, anyone with any type of cognitive sense can look at a championship belt. A championship belt should be a uh, answer of pride, dignity. Heck, even a Stone Cold Smoking Star belt has some of its fan base, and it looks nice. Hell, a spinner belt with its nice little uh, belt and diamonds or what have you. Looks actually really you know in a in the right type back in 2005 when it spinned it really fit this character what have you, and it actually looked halfway decent. Yes, this one about does look halfway decent what have you. Now it looks like an eyesore. Just it just goes away for too long. But this championship belt, this Jeff Hardy, this 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 like fish cake. This seriously, it's like a giant fish. On a championship belt, I don't know who in TNA in their right mind gave Jeff Hardy this. I'm sorry. I know he gets the fans. I know people who will hear this podcast will probably rate this down and call me a complete nutter, hater, and what have you, or everything else. I wish him the best, and I hope he uh, is on the straight now. I hope he has his life together, his family, everything else. I hope he has the greatest life in his uh, of existence, I hope uh, why he, myself, and I hope he wishes for me. But then again, he doesn't even know me or what have you. But you know what I mean. I hope he has the greatest life and a great champion main or what have you. But can someone please just get him away from the championship designer? I mean, it just ah, uh, I can just go on like five hours ranting how bad this thing is. But I, 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 I I'm still suffering a bit of the current flu, so. If you haven't heard nothing else, I just can't just rant and rave like I used to. You know, hopefully by the next week I'll be fine. But that, damn that championship belt! Oh God, just, just you and I just do me a favor and just, just have them just torture, just, just someone just blow it up or something. Uh, Part of me wishes the aces and eights wins that title or something, and they just crack it and destroy it. And have it like to bring him back to TNA, what have you? I don't know. I just don't want Jeff Hardy anywhere near a championship. Like, God forbid what he would do with a WWE split. Like people will bitch about the WWE title, what have you? What would happen if Jeff Hardy or WWE actually let him do that with a WWE championship? I shudder to think what would happen if he actually did that to the WWE title. We'd be begging, outright on our knees, praying. 
praying to our knees are bloody. If if he would have did that to the WWE title, let me tell you something. We will love to spin a belt for the rest of our days. We will be begging the WWE to bring back the spin a belt if he ever did that to the WWE Championship. So thank goodness he's in TNA, so he can actually, well, you know, it's not as big, but it wouldn't be as embarrassing. But anyway... I just don't like the fact. I, I as for the call him when the belt, don't like it. Just it's just stupid. I just don't think it's just it's going to be as a as a real positive thing. Anyway, <clears throat> that is it. Going, that's going to be for me. That's it for me. Anyway, uh, thank you so much for listening. This is Duke CT here. Peace and love. I will see y'all when I see y'all later. Thank you.